In a world where the stakes are high and the markets are brutally honest, two companies stand at the crossroads of controversy. Who really holds the power in the world of finance? Is it the SEC, FINRA, or the companies themselves? This is the story of the MMTLP fiasco, a saga of corporate actions, market manipulation, and the untold truth. The clock is ticking, the shares are in play, but who's really in control? Uncover the mystery of the MMTLP corporate actions, the role of FINRA, and the untold relationships they appear to have with their member firms. This isn't just a story about finance, it's a story about power, control, and the fight for transparency. Join us as we unravel the truth behind how and why FINRA manipulated the MMTLP Corporate Actions Part 3. Available now on YouTube. While that would have been a perfect note to end on, why don't we use this opportunity to point out one of the most recent ways FINRA has chosen to deceive the public. In this image, we can see the initial correspondences between Nextbridge Hydrocarbons and FINRA that FINRA shared on July 27, 2023. Observe that the correspondences began on April 18 and that FINRA responded once in May and then again on June 7. According to FINRA, it was in the interest of transparency that they were posting the correspondences. But if that was the case, why did nearly two months pass since the last communication? Why did FINRA wait until a day after Nextbridge Hydrocarbons referenced the correspondences in a PR? Sometime in February, FINRA updated the page to include eight new correspondences that took place between November 21, 2023 and February 5, 2024. What's most deceptive about this is that FINRA now uses April 18, 2023 as the date on the page and the text in the paragraph below the header falsely gives the impression that FINRA has been transparent since the initial correspondence. This is a lie, and it's very similar to when FINRA claimed the D1 deletion code for MMTLP didn't properly appear due to a coding error. 